Welcome to our lecture online. Let's say that we have a manned mission to Mars. The spacecraft, and yes, it doesn't quite look like a spacecraft, but I'm trying to simulate like a, a simple model of a spacecraft, like a, uh, like a, hmm, a tube, for example, uh, what we call a cylindrical tube. And let's say that we're getting close to Mars, and for some reason, the heater breaks. Kind of what happened with Apollo 13 when they had to turn off all the equipment because they didn't have enough fuel and enough power to keep everything going. So the question is if they have to turn everything off and so there's no more any heat generated inside the tube, and let's assume that we're ignoring the heat generated by the bodies of the astronauts inside the tube, inside the spacecraft, what would the temperature of the spacecraft be, first of all, if the orientation is such that only the back side would receive sunlight, then we'll call that part A. And then, of course, when they get smart, they go, wait a minute, we want it a little warmer, then they turn the spacecraft sideways as they're approaching Mars, so they get more sunlight. The sunlight would now hit the entire side of the spacecraft. What would be the temperature at that point in time? So we did a little work ahead. First of all, the dimensions are that it's about six meters long, the diameter is about two and a half meters. The distance at Mars is about 1.6 astronomical units, about 1.6 times the distance to the Earth, which is around 150 million kilometers away from, uh, from the Sun. So that means the distance from the Sun to Mars would be about 1.6 times that. The intensity of the sunlight reaching the distance of the Earth is 1,361 watts per square meter. So the intensity of Mars, well, notice that the intensity by definition is equal to power divided by area, and area is a function of distance squared, so that means that the intensity of Mars would be 1361 watts per square meter divided by 1.6 squared, because that's how much farther Mars is compared to the Earth. So what would be the intensity of the sunlight by the time we reach Mars? 1361 divided by 1.6 squared equals, would be about 532 watts per square meter. So what we're going to do now is calculate how much heat the spacecraft would receive for part A and how much heat the spacecraft would receive for part B. So for part A, the, uh, we can say that the power received is equal to the intensity times the area. So in this case, we only receive energy on the back side, that circular area of the spacecraft there. So that would be equal to 532 watts per square meter divided by the area, which would be pi, times the radius, 1.25 meters squared. So multiply that times pi and times 1.25 squared equals, that would be 2,610 watts. So the power for part A would be 2,610 watts. Now for part B, when they turn the spacecraft around and now the whole side of the spacecraft is receiving sunlight, that then the area that would receive it, because we have to take into account that it's curved, it would be what the surface area would look like if we had a cross-sectional area. So in this case, that would be uh, pi, uh, power would be intensity times the length times the diameter of the spacecraft. So that would be the effective area that would receive sunlight. So in this case, that would be 532 watts per square meter times the length, which is 6 meters, and times the diameter, in this case, would be 2.5 meters. And let's see what that's equal to. So 532 times 6 times 2.5, that gives 7,980 watts. So what would be the, what we'd call the equilibrium temperature? Equilibrium temperature would be reached when we have a point where the amount of heat received from the sun equal to the amount of heat being radiated by the spacecraft. Remember, the spacecraft will be radiating in all directions, forward, backwards, and around all the sides. For our convenience, we have the area of a cylinder being equal to the area of the side, which is 2 pi r times the length, plus twice the area of each, each end. And so it would be twice pi r squared, and here I've already calculated ahead of time what those areas are. So what we're going to do is use the equation we're going to use the equation that the uh, power, which is equal to the dq dt, is equal to e sigma a yes, times temperature to the fourth power. That's the amount of energy 
received or radiated from a certain surface that has a surface area A and is at a temperature T to the fourth power. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the, the power radiated by the spacecraft and um, then if we want to find the temperature of the spacecraft we can solve that for T so we can say T is equal to the fourth root because what we're going to do is we're going to take the power and divide it by E sigma A when you divide both sides of the equation by that. So E sigma A, that leaves us with T to the fourth power. If we take the fourth root of both sides, we have the temperature, the equilibrium temperature. All right, so for part A, the temperature is going to be equal to the, to the fourth root of the temperature uh, of the power. So let's, for part A, the power that we receive is 2610, which is also the power that's being radiated. So 2610 divided by E. Uh, let's let, let E equals 1 to make it easy. So we'll just go ahead and use the emissivity constant to be equal to 1. Sigma 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. And then what else do we need? We need the area and the area of well, it would be the entire spacecraft would be 56.9. So it would be 56.9 square meters. And that will give us the equilibrium temperature when we only get sunlight from the very back and then the whole spacecraft radiates. So let's see what that's equal to. 2610 divided by 5.67 e to the 8 minus divided by 56.9, which is the total surface area, and then take the fourth root of that and the temperature would be 169 Kelvin. So that would be equal to 169 Kelvin, which is equal to minus 104 degrees Celsius. So that would be the temperature of the spacecraft, which would be rather cold. So you can see that the, the astronauts in there would very quickly freeze to death if they didn't have any power to keep themselves warm. But what if they turn the spacecraft sideways so now the whole side receives sunlight? Certainly we would then be warmer. So let's then do it for part B. And the temperature would be equal to the fourth root of the power. Now the power is going to be 7,980 watts divided by emissivity 1, sigma 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, and the whole surface area rating at the heat 56.9 like that let's see what the equilibrium temperature would be now for the astronauts in this particular case so 7980 divide by 5.67 e to the 8 minus divide by 56.9 take the fourth root of that so now we're up to 223 kelvin so temperature equals 223 kelvin which is equal to minus 50 degrees Celsius. And so you can see that definitely, if they were in such a predicament and they're approaching Mars, now they're quite far away from the sun, they could turn their spacecraft sideways so they get the maximum amount of sunlight hitting the spacecraft and the temperature would only drop to minus 50. At least, not quite as cold as minus 104. And that is how it's done. Yeah, thermal underwear. And those batteries, those socks with batteries. Keep your feet warm. <laughs> which, uh, which we used to use when I lived in Canada. <laughs>